Hello guys, welcome to a day in 15 minutes UPSC prelims daily current affairs by NEO IAS. So today on 28 January 2020, our topics for discussion are K4 ballistic missile, then jelly cutter, development support services to states for infrastructure projects, then dedicated freight corridor cooperation of India, then financial action task force and Pariksha Pe Charcha 2020. So, our first topic that is K4 ballistic missile. Okay, so the, you can see the picture. The related news is that India it successfully test fires its nuclear capable K4 ballistic missile of Andhra Pradesh coast. Okay, so this is the news. So, here uh, first you have to know about uh, K4 ballistic missile. So, actually uh, this submarine missile, it is designed by the Defense Research and Development Organization. Okay. So, here you, uh, you can see the diagram that this K4, it's a 3500 kilometer range nuclear capable missile. Okay. So, this K4 missile, it can carry a warhead weighting up to 2 tons. Okay. Please remember that 2 tons. And also, and the peculiarity is that it is powered by a solid rocket propellant okay so the peculiarity is that this missile okay it is capable of penetrating precise targets from the ground to air fine so the thing is that under a qrsam system this missile it also moves and monitor the enemy aircraft or uh, enemy drones and then they will target them immediately during a military operation Okay, so according to the DRDO, the missile uh, or the, the missile it can cruise at hypersonic speed and, and also it is maneuverable. Fine. So, to avoid and defeat the ballistic missile defense system, the K-4 it can perform three dimensional maneuvers. So, this K-4 it is one of the two underwater missiles uh, which is currently being developed by India for its submarine force. So, as I said, one is K4 while the other one is B05 and it is having a strike range of over 700 km. Okay. So, here you can uh, or you have to keep in mind some important things. That is, the missile, it will be deployed on the Indian Navy's indigenous INS Arihant class nuclear powered submarines. Okay. And the K series missiles, they are named after former President APJ Abdul Kalam. Okay. And also this DRDO, it has also begun its research on K5, uh, which is having a target of 5000 km. And the K15 missile, this is also known as Sakarika missiles. Okay. So, please remember these points. Fine. So, moving to our second topic, that is Jelly Cutter. So, the, today's editorial in Hindu, it is like this. That is the bull and gore on Jelly Cutter. So, what is a jelly cat? We know it is a traditional bull taming event that is organized in the state of Tamil Nadu. Okay. So, it is a typically uh, practiced as a part of Pongal celebration, especially on the Matu Pongal day, which occurs annually in January. And the sport, it requires fighters to pounce on a running bull and they try to hold on its hump and they move along with the animal without falling or getting hurt. So, the thing is that it requires quick reflex and a fleet foot to tame the bull. That is the thing. So, uh, what happens is that it will try to get away and shake off the fighter at some times. Okay. So, this is how the jelly coat is uh, celebrated. And this jelly coat, it is a dated tradition and also it is an ancient reference to a bull taming. It is found in a seal that is being discovered at Mohanjadaru. So, the sport it was also called as Eru Tharuel or uh, it means embracing the bull. So, the term jelly cat it comes from the Tamil term that is Salli Kasa which means coins. Okay. And this Ketu it means pack, uh, package tied to the horns of bull as a praise money. Okay. Uh, there comes the word jelly cat. Clear. So, here you have to uh, remember 
uh, two things. That is, in 2014, the Supreme Court, it had banned the event after a plea that has been filed by the Animal Welfare Board of India and also the people for uh, ethical treatment of animals. So, however, what happens, the state government, it insisted that this jelly cut, it is a crucial part of its culture and identity. So, what happened? The ban, it was lifted in January 2017 after massive protest in Chennai. Okay, that thing you have to uh, remember. So, our next topic is development support services to states for infrastructure projects. So, the news is that the MOU, it has been signed between Niti Aayog and Union Territory of Ladakh for development of infrastructure projects. So, the thing is that the partnership, it lays trust on three things. That is, first is identification of high impact priority objects and also uh, expedited project implementation and also addressing structural level issues and even creating unique models of development for the Union Territory of Ladakh. And whereas the Niti Aayog, it has committed to assist the Union Territories Administration in creating a strategic plan for identifying prioritized infrastructure project and also by providing end-to-end -end transaction management support for these identified projects. Okay, so this is how it works. So, talking about the development support services to states for infrastructure project, here you have to uh, remember is that this implemented by the Niti Aayog with a vision to achieve transformational and also sustained delivery of infrastructure project with the state of art capacity that has been disseminated at all levels of governance. Fine. So, the key objective behind it is creating a PPP success stories and also rebooting infrastructure project delivery models so as to sustainable infrastructure creation cycle is being established. Okay, so the initiative it involves providing project level support from concept plan till financial closure to the state government or even to the union territories. Okay, so that's all. Uh, our next topic it is dedicated freight corridor cooperation of India. So the news is that the 14th foundation day of dedicated freight corridor cooperation of India it was celebrated at a function in New Delhi on 18 January 2020. So, first you have to know about the genesis of this DFCC idea. So, the thing is that the railways, it lost the share in the freight traffic from 83 percentage, that is that to in 1950-51 to 35 percentage in 2011-12. So, the rapid growth of Indian economy, it has created what demand for additional capacity of rail freight transportation and this is likely to grow further in the future. Okay, so this demand it led to the conception of dedicated freight corridors along the eastern and western routes. So, this dedicated freight corridors, they were proposed in the railway budget of 2005 and 2006. Fine. So, the thing is that it was included in the declaration of cooperation that is being signed between the uh, Honorable Prime Minister of India and Japan for a feasibility study and also possible funding for the uh, dedicated rail freight corridors by the Japanese government. So, as a result, what happened? This led to the establishment of this DFCC as a company under the Companies Act of 1956 on 30th October 2006. Fine. So, the main, uh, it has got um, some of main objectives. So, the main objectives are, as I said, uh, the first one is to build a corridor with appropriate technology that enables Indian Railways to regain its market share of freight transport, thereby creating an additional capacity and efficiency. Okay, so that is the primary objective. And also other objectives are uh, to create multimodal logistic path and also to create uh, ecological sustainability. Okay, that, uh, so these things you have to remember in mind. Then, our next topic, it is Financial Action Task Force. So, the news is that the Pakistan, it seeks US help to get out of the FATF grade. So, the background uh, you have to remember is that the Pakistan was placed on the FATF grey list for terror financing in June 2018 on a proposal that has been moved by the US, UK, Germany and 
So, you may think oh, what is this gray list? So, the thing you have to remember is that this, this gray list it is simply a classification that has been used by the FATF for its effectiveness to deal with terrorists and its facilitators. Okay. So, these countries uh, they will be subjected to direct monitoring and also Indian scrutiny by the International Cooperation Review Group or Terror Financing. Okay. So, they will be continuously monitoring these countries. So, it will skew this listed country's economy and make it harder to meet its mounting foreign financing need which includes the potential future borrowings from IMF also. Okay. So, that is this grey list. So, next about FATF, you know it is an intergovernmental body whose purpose is to combat money laundering and terrorist financing. So, its main function is to develop necessary policy to bring out national legislative and also regulatory reforms in these areas. Okay. So, next you have to remember is that it was established by the G7 summit which was held in Paris. Okay. That is in 1989. Then, so this FATF secretary it is hosted at the OECD headquarters in Paris. And about its members, you know, as of 2019, the FATF it consists of 39 member jurisdictions including India and two regional organizations, then the European Commission and Gulf Cooperation Council. That is about its members. Then here you have to know about 40 plus 9 recommendation. So what is that? The FATF primary policies issued are the 40 recommendation on money laundering from 1990, that is one thing, and the 9 special recommendations on terrorism financing. Okay, so these two things, they together, they called as 40 plus 9 recommendation. Fine. Then, our next topic, it is Parisha Pe Charcha 2020. So, actually, it is an interaction program of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi with students from India and abroad to be the exam, exam stress. Okay. So, around 2000 students are participating from all over India in this uh, Parisha Pe Charcha 2020. And also another thing you have to remember is that 50 Divya students, they will also take part in the interaction program that is being held at New Delhi. Fine. So, in the last class, I have given you two questions. So, the first one is naval exercise sea guardians, it has been conducted between which of the two countries? So, you know sea guardians is a joint naval drill between Pakistan and China. So, it is the sixth in the bilateral series and it is being held in the Arabian Sea. So, here you have to note that Dharma Guardian, it is a joint military exercise between India and Japan. So, uh, here I ask about Sea Guardian, it is a joint naval drill between Pakistan and China. So, do not get confused. So, here your answer is B. Okay. So, next lang uh, question is Sikh language, which is recently seen in the news, it is related to which one of the following countries? So, according to the Endangered Language Alliance, that is the ELA, Seek it is one of uh, one of the 100 indigenous languages of Nepal. So, the significance is that it is one of the endangered languages in the world. So, the Seek it belongs to Nepal. So, your answer is A. So, today you have got uh, again two questions. So, the first one is uh, the Eshwasini scheme for women entrepreneurship. It was launched in which state? Okay. So, this is one question. Your second question is Sahyo Khaijin, it is a joint exercise between India and which of the following country and your options are A, Thailand, B, Japan, C, Germany and D, Bhutan. Okay. So, guys, uh, that is all for today's uh, session. So, please find the answer for these two questions and please comment in the comment session. So, if you have any doubt, please comment in the comment session. Thank you so much. Like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Follow our website neoiascap.com for the detailed content and monthly prelims digest. Also join our current affairs exclusive test series through the website. And finally, participate in the daily current affairs prelims infotainment queues at our telegram channel that is neoiasprelims at 9.30 pm every day. Thank you.